Welcome back everyone, I'm the Redstone Warbler here, and I was scrolling through Reddit as you do, and I got inspired to make a 7 segment display. But the display I'm going to show you today is not this one. This one is super terrible, it's super bulky, the binary to decimal converters are super big, they're kind of spaced out, there's a whole bunch of empty space, the binary counters are not even all in. This is one I was making a very long time ago, and eventually kind of transitioned to the one that you can see up there, but this one also sucks because it also doesn't have the full system embedded in it, and it's just kind of a real mess of trying to get all of the binary to decimal converters in so that everything worked right, and it's just overall terrible. And these ones are also not ones that I will be showing you today. While these ones are a little bit cooler, and you can select what number you want to select on this one, and this one, if you hit the button, will start counting, they also suck. I mean, yeah, they have a little glass case, but they're also not the one I'm going to show you. No, today this is the one that I'm going to show you. It's nice and skinny, it kind of fits within its own footprint for the most part, and it has a built-in binary counter as well as a way to select what digit you would like to have on the screen. Except that that's not quite the whole truth because the real one I built is actually over here where I tiled all of these together to make a four digit seven segment display. Now this display is actually quite special as you can not only select what number, so if we were to put in let's say a nice special number like 290 for the number of subscribers I have at the recording of this video, and you can see that all of them light up at the bottom here. I can also hit this button here and reset all of them back to zero, but you will also notice that these numbers don't light up even when this is, and if I were to say let's put a 8 over here, all of the zeros suddenly fill in. But that's not all that I have included. The other functionality is this has a start button where this will function as a clock down in the very center here and activate this binary counter which slowly ticks across counting up on the display. Now the binary counter itself can be run at a slightly faster tick rate but this tick rate is just perfect so that you can see each number before it switches to the next one on the lowest digit. And before I continue too far in the video can we all appreciate how much glow ink sacks are actually really cool for signs. As you just saw there, this 4 digit 7 segment display also features a reset button which resets all of the binary counters. Did I just say binary counters? Yes, that was plural and it was meant to be because this also features a second binary counter to keep track of the pure number in binary. See the way I'm counting up each segment segment display is every time one of these binary counters reaches 10, which is too high for a single digit, it actually feeds over into this next one and continues counting. This way, every time a counter reaches to 9, it adds one to the counter over and resets the previous one, or the current one, to 0. Meanwhile, the counter out the back is keeping track of the pure binary number as the binary number displayed on the screen is not the sum of all of these bits down here. Another cool feature of this 4 digit 7 segment display is that you can go ahead and input extra numbers onto the screen and it will not actually affect the binary count below. So we just added 8,000, and let's just make this 8,050. You can see that that's there. But if we just go ahead and reset all of our normal inputs so that they're zero, you can see that our original number of 40 remains on the screen. Now, typically you would not have a function to input numbers into each display unit and count at the same time, and they're not really intended to be used at the same time. This is just a showcase to show that one display can be used for multi-purposes, and if you want it so desire, you could just remove all of these buttons to keep the pure binary count down here for each digit, or you could remove these lamps entirely to have a pure four digit seven segment display. So far, every bit of this contraption is mostly understandable. You have your binary to decimal converters here, which run up these set of torch towers, which are kind of moved out towards the side. This way, each one of the binary to decimal converters fits within the conversion tower to turn it into a seven segment display. These just run up some torch towers here and using a little bit of clever logic will only turn on certain lines if it is supposed to be displayed. It's not too difficult to interpreting the wires. You can see that this would be your zero line and for a zero, this bar should be powered if this was turned on at the moment. To do that, we can actually flip one of the multiple settings here, where you can flick all of these levers if you want to display the zeros even when there's no number in front of it. 
So if we just flick that so that they all will show their number with where the zeros are now shown in front, you can see that the tower corresponding to zero is lit up, which is powering this line. On the same tower, you can also see that it is powering this line and this line and that line under there, which is making every line of the zero show up. This is done for every single digit up to nine. In this way, as long as only one of these torch towers is active, it will display one number to the screen. The way we actually convert our binary to decimal is by using this set of decoders here, which take each four bits of binary, which cleverly fit perfectly under the little display, hanging out only one block on either side. If we jump down here, you can see that each line of bits gets run straight across these lines here for all four bits, and using a clever pattern of torches and repeaters, we can actually decode a signal into only one output. Of course, if we were doing the full four bits, this would actually extend a little bit farther, going all the way up to 15. Of course, with a seven segment display such as this one, that's not exactly what you want because each digit can only support up to nine. Of course, binary counters are also fairly simple to understand as each bit alternates going one, zero, one, zero, counting just like you would from zero to 10. Only instead of counting from zero all the way to nine before resetting, we only get to one before resetting and we do this for each bit, progressively taking longer and longer to count to the next bit. In this case, these binary counters get to a specific code, which is 10 here, so you see 8 plus 2 is 10, and when both of these are off and these two are on, which signifies that we have counted to 10, this reset line gets triggered, which resets the counter back to 0 so they can continue counting as well as triggering the next one in the sequence to start counting the next bit. Of course, once you get to the very end, there are no more bits to continue cycling, so this whole line will end up being set, and as well as the main binary counter, which keeps track of what number you're currently at, which you could use to send input into a computer of sorts. The last little piece of circuitry that I wanted to introduce is using the amazingness that is glass only transmitting signals one way, we can create this AND gate across all four digits of each seven segment display and run them into this target block, which then activates this little circuit. What this does is causes us to power the zero line when this should be unpowered in order to create our zero. This creates an incorrect combination, which then results in the screen displaying nothing. Of course, the way we turn this off is just by powering this, and now suddenly this bit will display its zero, and because this bit is displaying a zero, all of the subsequent bits will turn into zeros. And the last little piece of redstone trickery is if for some reason any of these bits are enabled, which means this line would be powered, it will power the subsequent previous one, chaining all the way back through, just like a cancel carry adder would, except without the cancel. I am the redstone warper, warping redstone, one machine at a time, and I bet you can't make this counter need another digit. Thanks for watching.